All right. I am so excited because I am here today with my fabulous friend, the fabulous Doris Birch. And you, oh my gosh, those of you listening are in for a treat today. And if you are watching on YouTube, you have to go look because she just looks absolutely gorgeous. And we'll, we'll talk about red and all that stuff, but but I'm so thankful that you are here today, Doris, and I can't wait for our conversation. Well, I have to say thank you for asking me to be on the podcast. I'm, I'm so appreciative of it. I, you know, I do love always talking, but it is a deep honor to be here with you today. Oh, thank you. And this is, you know, the Reawakened Mom podcast is really all about sharing all things. It can be motherhood. It can be business. It can be self-care. It can be self-love. Like really it's all about reawakening yourself and coming home to yourself and really who you are and opening up your mind and to the, all the possibilities that are out there. So I would love to just talk to you just about your journey and kind of how you got here. Like, how did it start? You can go as deep or as little or as much as you want, but how did you get here? Fabulous Doris Birch. <laughs> well, the truth is, is that I started out like a lot of women following the, the path that has been set that you go to college, you get your degree and you do your career. And somewhere along that path, um, a light bulb got turned on. And it was, and I say it has to go back to my senior year of my college journey. And it ended up taking a psychology class. And I didn't realize how I was going to love that course so much. And it just made me interested in people on a different level. I was, I'm a fashion major, so I majored in fashion merchandising. So I already had that passion for women and, and how clothes really affect women and how they show up. But when I took the psychology course, it almost like expanded that, um, that, that love of working with women on a deeper level and really able to understand how powerful clothes are for a woman and, and it brought a level of compassion to really understand when, because I worked a lot of retail, of course, in that journey. So there are a lot of women that came through um, and you would hear their stories, you know, you would hear their stories. And a lot of times their stories where they didn't like how they look. Mm -hmm. yeah. They didn't really like how they look. And that was intriguing for me. So that was really where it probably started. Then I went into my corporate career and I don't know about you, but I um, didn't follow the initial plan. Okay. I deviated the plan out of fear. And at the time, of course, I wouldn't have admitted that that was why it was, it was fear, um, but it was fear. And, and that is something I think is a powerful thing to talk about because on this journey, being an awakened mom and being in the journey in business and self-care and love, all love, it really comes down to fear. You know, our fears can really stop us from being who we want to be. But luckily, even if you get off track, you can get back on another track and really start to pursue that version of yourself. And so that's really what happened to me. I had this deep, deep calling inside of myself that I was supposed to do something else. And so I figured since I went off track, maybe there was some redemption <laughs> that I could really figure something out for me to really impact women. And that was the download I got. It was like, I had this journaling experience. I call it my own um, Moses burning bush moment. And it was in October of 94. And I was just literally in tears sitting in the middle of my bed. Like I felt like it was something else I was here to do. Like my corporate career, as good as it was, or as great as it seemed to be, wasn't it. It wasn't it. This was like, I cannot see me just continuing doing this and not making a bigger impact, you know? And it was that moment that I literally heard the voice of God inside of my spirit say, Doris, I'm going to have you on the platform empowering women to be the highest version who I created them to be. And that literally just was like, what? I got goosebumps when you said that. I got goosebumps. Yeah. And it was like, and then there you go. I don't know how to do that. I don't have a voice. I don't know any women, you know, other than the women I work with. And 
in that corporate game, everybody's not that great. Yeah. <laughs> as far as connecting, you know, you have this business corporate relationship, but not any real deep connection with women in that place because, you know, there's a lot of, there go, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. And so I was just like, I didn't know how. And I, and I also was the person who always kept going back to school. So by that point, I have two master's degrees. I'm like thinking I need to go to school to get another degree because I'm like, something is missing and I don't know what it is. And then I was like, do I need, I don't know where to go to school for that. Yeah. And so that kept being in my head, the how. And you would think having that kind of download um, would make me just like, I'm going to figure this out. Well, what happened was I was invited to an event, probably maybe in the next couple of weeks. And what happened at that event that it gave me the vision of the download. It showed me what that looks like empowering women. And so when I thought about it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's it. That's what it looks like. Okay, now that I know what it looks like, I need to figure out how to show up in that. But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do it. Yeah. It took me another eight years oh. to finally say, okay, maybe I need to figure out what this thing is. And it was because my son was born. And um, that becomes your new um, gauge for me. It became my new gauge of if I'm going to be this mom to this little boy, then I really should figure out what this thing that's calling me is because how do I really tell him that he can really go for things? You know, my parents told me I could really go for things, but there were things they didn't go for, you know? So it was like, they tell you that, then when you attempt, well, for me, when I attempted to go for some things, then they tell you, no, they say, you don't do that. Right, right. You have all these degrees. You're, you're supposed to be a corporate girl. This is what you do. And so then I got confused um, because nobody supported when I did attempt to do something out of the box. Yeah. And so um, that was the beginning of the awakening. That was like the door started to open up with that at that moment. Wow. So when you had your son, that's when you were like, the, you shifted, you were like, I have to, like, I have to be an example because if I'm telling him to do this and I'm not, what kind of example am I? That's really powerful. It really is because, you know, and once you step into doing the thing, whatever the thing may be. <laughs> which was for me, I stepped into direct sales and that brings everything to the surface. I mean, everything, things you have no idea. And I walked out of a corporate career with this level of confidence um, that had been developed over what, 15, 16, 17 years in the corporate space to now in this direct sale company, um, which had was an all women based company. Uh, so that was that empowering women thing. Um, yet I had to, what I didn't know was that I had lost myself mm -hmm. in that corporate career and that everything about me relied on a title and a business card and just working for that company that gave the credibility. And when I, I took me a year to be on that journey to try to un, unfold it and discover who I was again. And this company brought that element of discovery to the table where you can remember who you were, mm -hmm. who you said you were going to be when you were that younger version self where we have this whole dream of who we're going to be and how we're going to hit the world. Well, that started to come back. Um, but I also discovered that what I was told wasn't actually the complete truth. Like there were many different ways to be successful, that it didn't just mean you went to college and got degrees and climbed the corporate ladder in, in corporate America, that there really were other avenues that women could be successful in and find who they really are. And that is what I discovered by stepping into this company was that there were women from all walks of life, 
and it was an even playing field, like you all start at the same place and you decide. It gave me that new, because I used to didn't understand what self-made meant, because I didn't understand how people could be self-made. Um, but it taught me how self-made is because you get to decide who you're going to show up being. And that is a self-made move. It means that means shifting your mindset, you know, reading books, studying the leaders, you know, getting out of your comfort zone, busting fear every day in the face and showing up and getting past obstacles and failures and all the things. When you rise up, then you really are a self-made woman because you have to push through. Everybody doesn't push through that. You know, people stop and people have excuses and stories that hold them back. But when you push through your own stories and you realize your own stories, oh my gosh, that was the journey. And now it took me, I'm so grateful for that because that allowed me to be a better mom to my son because I started to be like, oh my gosh, these books and you're reading people's stories and you see everybody has a story everybody yeah everybody has a story and depending on your story depends on who you want to be and when you see people I get inspired when I see people who have those stories where you're like oh my gosh if that person could do it surely I can surely I don't have any of those obstacles my little obstacles are nothing compared to what some people go through and so those hard knock stories that you hear people get through I'm like okay, I can do this because at least I didn't have that to begin with. <laughs> yeah, I relate to that so much because a lot of your story is very similar to mine because I used to be a school teacher. And then when I was pregnant with my son, who's 15 at the time, right now, um, I had no idea about direct sales. I had never heard of it. I was the same as you. You go to college and you have a career for 30, 40 years and then you retire. That's how I thought the only way you could make money. I legally... <laughs> Like when someone told me I could make money from home and stay at home and raise my children, I was like, "Is am I going to get arrested? And that's what I thought because no one talked about it. Zero people. I had never heard of it. And I was 25 or 26 at the time. And I was like, how did I get through my whole life? And I've never heard of like making money from home. Like I could actually stay at home. So I really relate to that and the personal growth that goes along with that is just, I mean, you're, you're getting a paycheck, but really it's that personal growth and the growth in yourself that you get along the way. It's, it's just magical. It is absolutely magical. And for me, I remember my first trip um, going to, um, to an event with the company I was a part of. And we lived in St. Louis, Missouri at the time. And so I went to Houston, Texas. And um, I'm here at this event and I'm sitting here in this room and I'm like these women are just like on steroids of energy like blowing up and I'm looking around the room and I'm like what on earth is going on up in here you know like it is you know I'm thinking from my corporate things I went through and I'm sitting there like nobody has ever had this kind of energy women screaming and just excited and smiling and happy. I mean, it's just like, you can't be prepared for that kind of experience. And you're sitting there, you're looking around and you're like, okay, this is, this is intriguing. Okay. And then the speakers are all on something on a, on a surfboard of like freedom. Um, and so this one speaker, I will never forget her. She gets on stage. She's from the state of Texas. So she has that Southern Texas bra. Love it. And she's talking and I'm like, okay. It is no way in the corporate world she would be able to speak. Um, you know, she would have had to fix that draw like that. This would not work. And I'm sitting there critiquing her the whole time. And then I finally just stopped critiquing because I'm like well obviously you should be really listening because right. this thing of judging her is not going to serve you right so since you decided to become in this world be in this world and so I'm sitting there and I'm like listening more to her and all of a sudden Melissa she does the most bizarre thing she starts running around the room just running 
just running. Whatever she did, start running. And I'm like, this woman's running around the room. And everybody is like screaming and cheering and just going crazy. Obviously, I need to be on what they're on because that's a level of freedom I have, I don't have. Yeah. I don't have the freedom that will allow me to feel confident in myself, secure enough in myself to run around the room and know women are going to cheer me on. I was like, they will lock you up if you did that in the corporate space, you know? <laughs> so I came back home. That was that monkey finally got off my back. And I was like, okay, I want that kind of freedom, that kind of freedom to be fully you. Yes. Yes. And so how, how have you gotten there? Is that when the fabulous, like Doris Birch was manifested? No. Like, was it then? No. To be truthful, no, the fabulous Doris Birch did not really come into existence for another number of years later. I kept working at um, direct sale business. And then I had, I was in the business about six years and I got this, my next voice of God in my spirit was like, You've got everything you need. Now it's time to do the real work that you're supposed to be doing with women. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. It took me a hot minute to figure out this thing and get this growing. And now you want me to let it go. Right. And I was like, and, not, and, that, and I don't know what I'm doing next. This was the thing, let it go. And there was no clue on what I was doing next. So I held on for another year fighting that voice. And um, then we got relocated and my husband, um, we were moving here to Chicago area. And so my husband had left, it was 2009. My husband had already left to be here. And so then me and Trey were still in St. Louis from January to May. And I was a part of another uh, networking group. And I went to that group um, meeting, I think it was maybe February or March. I can't remember which month it was, but the speaker had flew in from California. And um, she started talking about the online world and all this stuff that you can do and coaching and everything. And it just resonated with my soul. And it was like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a coaching business and I'm going to get to working online so I can have women globally to work with. And that was it. That was how it got locked down. So I did, I signed up with the coach, did the whole program to set my business up. And we launched in January of 2010. And it wasn't until 2013 that the fabulous Doris Birch got birth. So it took them three years to really allow myself to step into this fabulous version of myself. I went through, uh, I started calling myself the fabulous Doris Birch and really was honing in on how I really wanted to work with women. And I was all about, you know, when I was growing up, you know, being fabulous and walking off the cover of a Vogue magazine, because I'm truly into fashion and I was <laughs> a fashion person. I mean, I came out the womb um, loving that whole world. So that is really my first love. Um, but I needed to re-figure out how to rework it into this next version of my journey. And so one of the pieces that I wanted to do in the coaching aspect with women was to bring the aspect of clothing in, you know, because what I really found was that a lot of women weren't allowing themselves to really fully show up in the clothes that support them and who they want to be. And so all I know is that when you really are in the clothes that support who you have decided to be, it supports you in your confidence and in your ability to show up and be highly seen and really paid, um, you know, the level of money you want to get make, you know, want to make in the world. It all ties together. And can so I ask you a question real quick? Can I ask you a question? Because I think it would be really beneficial, like for the listeners, especially we have a lot of moms. And, and I think after this pandemic, like a lot of us probably got close to being in like workout gear or like pants at home, stretchy pants, or like we're hot, we look good on the top and like, you know, pajamas on the bottom. You know, do, what does it mean to feel like amazing in the clothes that you're in? Like, how do you bring women to figure that out? Is it like a color thing? Is it like a type of cl like clothing? Like, what is a tip that you would have to, to help somebody listening be like, this is a step to help you feel more confident and, you know, in your clothes and in your skin? Well, the first thing is 
figuring out who you want to be. Yeah. Because who you're being is everything. So when you define who you want to be, what is the version of yourself? What, who is she? What does she look like? I mean, literally her hair, her skin, her nails, every single inch of yourself. And so we take women through the fabulous process. Um, so there are eight levels of that. But you really, but the one, the L in fabulous is really about loving yourself. And when a woman really loves herself and can define who it is she really wants to be, who she wants to be, not what she thinks her husband wants her to be or her mom wants her to be, or her kids have defined her to be. You know, one of the big things about to me with women who, who become moms is that they seem to have lost themselves in the thing. They get married and they take on this wife role, uh, which can, gets misconstrued on what that means. And then they add the mom to the thing. So now they're wife and mom. So they're totally like lost. Yeah. They literally have put themselves on the back burner. And I'm like, no, you know, one of the things I feel very fortunate with is that I never did lose myself as a woman because I got married and became a mom. I never did. That was really something really important to me to not lose myself along the journey. So I'm, so I've already had, but I already came into the thing with a really strong identity of self. And so one of the things is women getting really strong, their identity, who is it that you want to be? When you define who you want to be, there are, there are clothes that go with that version self there that you will be attracted to and that will support you in being fully you. And so it first comes with defining who it is you want to be, giving yourself unapologetic permission to be her. And then you will know what to wear from there. It's like, it's really, it's not complicated. I don't, I'm not one who talks about certain colors. There are, I do think everybody has a color. Like I have a color, the red really is my color. It supports me and everything. I don't wear it a lot. I mean, like I, we were talking earlier, I mean, I just really got a couple red sweaters just now, just now in my life. I'm like, so it's so, and it's like, because I know red is my color, there means the thing that is red that I wear has to look a certain way. It has to have a feeling because um, clothes have energy and vibration to them. So it has to be identical to my vibration to be able to be on my body, if that makes sense. Oh, it makes, I'm like, I'm totally with you. I'm following along. I'm like, I'm, yeah, uh uh-huh. I'm like snapping my fingers. I'm nodding my head. Everything you just said. I mean, I believe in energy, the clothes, your, your surroundings, you know, the things that you wear, everything has energy and it, it, it builds your confidence and, and love of being in your space and who you are, because if not, you're going to feel like, oh, if you don't feel good in what you're wearing and not because of your size, like who, we're not talking about size. Oh, we're not even talking about size. Size, yeah, size no, we, nothing to do with it no. because there are some women who especially love Instagram, especially, you know, you love the social media world because it opens up so many things, but oh my God, I have seen some of the most fabulous, stylish women who are considered in the plus market. And, but, th- but when you see someone like that, she's, she's, her identity is locked in. Yeah. She, it does not, she does not let her size define what she can wear she wears what she wants and I love those women who give themselves that kind of permission yes size has nothing to do with it and I'm like even if you want to lose weight you can still wear what you want to wear and still lose the weight you don't have to wait till the weight's gone because sometimes it never goes away (laughs) yeah I love that because it is like so many women think oh well I have to be a certain size before I can wear this but it is literally like like you said, you have to love yourself first. You, I mean, especially if moms are listening to this, like you delivered a child, maybe more than one child. Do you know how amazing that is? And so appreciate yourself. Be great. Like be grateful for your body and whatever shape, size, like color, wherever you are in your body right now, like stop and thank it for getting you to this moment. You're right. And that is a powerful point because motherhood, the whole thing with carrying my son and all that journey. Oh my God. I was like in such a a zone about, I mean, you know, intellectually how children are brought into the world, but when you go through it yourself, and even if you're a woman who didn't naturally have a baby, but you're still a mom, it still all works. 
so, so don't get misconstrued with what I'm saying. Um, but we have the power to create life. There is something in women that um, that when a child comes into our space, you know, in our world, we become this mom, gets activated within us. And so we are creators. We create life. And so we have these humans, these little humans that we feed into and create and mold and stuff. We are the most powerful force on the planet. Yes. And to not love yourself is almost like slapping, you know, the, the universe in the face because not understanding how powerful we are as women and what we can do and all the things that we can do, all the things we can do as moms, household, running businesses, raising children. You, you look back and wonder how on earth did I do it? Yes. Every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> I mean, my son is now 21. So he's in college. But girl, when he graduated from high school, I was like, Literally, for 12 years, preschool, even longer than that, whenever, for 18 years, we're just going to go with 18, let's, well, maybe two, two to 18, 16 years, every day, every day, I made pancakes, every day, every <laughs> single day from scratch pancakes so his little tummy would be full mm. because otherwise I found a cereal he was just still hungry and so I wanted him to be full and so every day I got up and I made pancakes when he graduated from high school literally even that summer I did not do pancakes every day I was done there's no more school I'm not doing pancakes every day every now and then I was like, I did pancakes every day for 16 years, every single day for 16 years. That is crazy. Yeah. But I did it. I. Yeah. And the little things we say we can't do as women, come on. I did pancakes for 16 years every day. Talk about consistent. <laughs> consistent. I'm not a good cook. I'm like, I don't enjoy being in the kitchen. That is not a place. That's not, the kitchen is really not my friend. I struggle in the pancake world. I mean, sometimes they look okay. Sometimes they don't look okay. It didn't really matter, but I did it. Yeah, oh, I love that. And so did you go through withdrawal when you stopped making pancakes? Were you like, <laughs> no. No. no, you were like, thank you. I'm done. <laughs> I was done. Now, if I try to make some, I'm just literally lost. I'm like, I don't remember how to do it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I love that so much. I love like this whole conversation too. And so, you know, talking about that and moms and confidence and all the things I would love. So, you know, we started getting into like the fabulous part of like the fabulous yes. doors. Yes. What is, what, what is fabulous? Like, what does that mean to you? And why was that part of like your identity of like doors birch the fabulous? Like, why did you do that? What does it mean? Well, I'm so glad you asked that because that was one of the things that I wanted to redefine for the coaching to make it, um, take it onto a different level. And so in our coaching, we were really about deep diving. It's really excavating women's souls to really step into being who they want to truly be. And so I was like, well, fabulous needs to be up level. You know, it couldn't just be the fabulous in the dictionary um, and all that stuff. So really what was discovery of what I had gone through from leaving the corporate world to almost seven years in my direct sale business was that fabulous is that a forward feeling that only owning your power and living it can bring. And so fabulous is everything you ever wanted to be doing have. And that is our definition. Of fabulous. Mm, oh my gosh. That is, that is powerful. Like that is really, it's not just a word. It's like a verb. Yeah, it's, it's deeper. So when people look at me, because people could get misconstrued and look at me and, and see how I show up in the world and think that, that you know, me calling myself the fabulous doors Birch means you got to step out and dress like I do and show up like I do. No, fabulous is owning your power, owning your power and living in owning your power. That is, is not every woman is owning her power and she's surely 
uh, owning and living in it. I mean, that's some unapologetic permission to give yourself that ability to own and live in your own personal power and understanding that it is everything you want it to be, do, and have. So this whole thing where we see, you know, I'm, I'm one of the people that talks about having it all and a lot of women think they can't have it all, but have it all is on your terms. Yes. And if it's everything you want, everything you want it to be, do, and have, then check in and ask yourself, are you on track to have everything? Are you being who you want to be? And in being who you want to be, are you having what you just said you want? And then are you doing the things that allow you and support you in who you're being and having? Yeah. And I think it goes back to success because what you think is success is not what I think is success is not what anyone thinks is successful. Right. So if somebody's like, well, I'm not successful enough. Well, on whose terms? It's right. your definition. It's, are you successful on your terms? Like you don't have to be, do what I'm doing and what door, like, what is it on your terms? It's not right. the same. It is not the same. And that's why it's like, when women can understand the success is their own definition of it, as long as they're waking up every single day and they love the life they're living and they are doing what they want to do and they're being who they want to be and they're having all the things they want to have, then that's their version of success. Nobody else can judge that. Yeah. Nobody. And that's the freedom, um, you know, that I truly believe that supports women you know, a woman in being really fabulous and really owning the truth of who she is. Yeah. And it's not easy. I mean, I'm sure that it's such a process. I mean, every, I'm sure it's like a daily thing and you're still living in it and still trying every day to be like, look myself in the mirror. I'm fabulous. Like I'm living the life that I want to live. Like, where do I want to go? You're still hearing, you know, things in your, in your ear from God, from universe of like, okay, now I'm up leveling again. Wait, I thought I was already up leveled. Like, how can I get any higher? You know, it's just, it's still, I, I always think that there's seasons. And so you're in this season right now, but that doesn't mean you're always going to be in this season. And you also can change. We were talking earlier about things that you're changing and you're, yeah. it's like, it's scary, but it's okay. And I think it's women giving yourself permission to know that you're allowed to change. Like whatever you're oh, doing, you let yeah. corporate, you, direct sales. Oh, now it's, that's okay. And it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. You know, if, if you are happy with it and you're called to do it, do it and change and it's okay. Absolutely. And I think that's the biggest thing. And I think when women understand there's always, if we, the, the blessed thing you can get is to wake up and still be here on the planet and you're breathing. So that is another level to up level. And there's always another level. There's always another level that you have to give yourself permission. If you really are serious, and this is really for women who know they're here to make a difference in the world, they know that they know it. They know it. I mean, if you don't really know that you're here for more, then maybe this conversation wouldn't be beneficial. I don't know. But if you know you're here for more, I really talk, my talk is really for the women who know they're here for more. And that means if you know it and you have decided to, to, to pursue it, you are absolutely required to up level. I mean, it is part of the job to yeah. change and evolve and expand and to really connect. You know, we talk a lot about at the Fat Factor, you know, energy and vibration and literally being in that frequency of, of all the things to create what you want. So, you know, those things are really important, the energy, your space and how you're showing up and your vibration. And then what frequency, if you're not where you want to be or if you're not getting something you want, the big insight is that you're just not on that frequency and what is it going to take to get on that frequency? You know, go like, and if you really want to understand frequency, I mean, really just go in your car and turn a channel on uh, XM radio, change from one channel to another, you just shift frequency. So it's like, if you can think of that in yourself, change your own frequency. Like what channel do I want to be on today? And then what does that look like? You know, journaling, meditation, prayer, all are part of the thing. And if you really study all of the people who are living at their highest level, they're the commonalities of that is the ones that I study all have some form of prayer, meditation, journaling in their part of their day. They do not get up and just start 
to just start living. They tune in, you know, it's that tuning in, tapping in and turning on to who you really are meant to be, as uh, Abraham says, you know, it's getting into that groove and then that supports you and who you want to be. You know, like I was, um, you know, for example, you know, I got the download of what to wear today. You know, that was the download. Then I went and got it, put it on. Yeah. Yeah. I, and so I, and I know we talked, we touched base on this right before we started recording, but when I was looking at your website, one of the things that I, that really popped out to me was don't be invisible. And I saw that and I wondered why was that so important to have on there? Was it something that you felt invisible for a long time? You still feel invisible? Like you find that most women feel like they are invisible and they're not using your voice. Like, I would love for you just to kind of talk a little bit about invisible, like don't be invisible and what, what that means, where it came from for you. That is a great question. Oh my gosh. Well, see, God in the universe has a fabulous sense of humor. <laughs> and so I went through a business makeover in 2014 and the, the guys that I was working with took all the things that I had been doing and listened to how I wanted to really impact. And when they finished doing my brand, um, you know, because we were calling everything the fabulous life in 2013 and all the things about being fabulous. And so when we came back and they revealed what my new brand was going to look like, um, the company was called The Fat Factor. And the message was, don't be invisible, be fabulous. And I like, you know, I loved it all. Then I had to tune in. So I had to go within and I had to ask why. Why is my brand now the fat factor? And why do I have this message? Don't be invisible, be fabulous. And lo and behold, <laughs> it started with me. Okay. It was started with me and my own truth. On people can look at me because I'm, you know, how I show up very confidently and um, powerfully in my space. And that is something I have been intentionally working on for a long time. However, I still had aspects, even today, still have aspects of invisibility um, in, in really being um, as, as big as I want and how powerful I want. So um, I know if somebody like me still hides and shrinks and plays small and hides behind you know, excuses and stories and things, then, then there are other women who are just as um, powerful and confident playing a bigger game, or it looks like people see they're playing a good game, or it's no way that she doesn't have these, anything that she's dealing with. Oh yeah. So it's like really all women have some form of invisibility that they are not allowing them to be who they fully want to be. And so we really dig deep into that. And so I'm always, always, you know, you know, evaluating that invisibility piece and like why are you still hiding and what you know why do you not really show up and speak and use your voice you know I remember when I started doing the podcast thing and um it took me a while to be able to just speak like now talking to you this long time I could do that but before before 2016 I think it's when I tapped into the podcast space or yeah, wow. I couldn't hold a long conversation like this. Now with a friend one-on-one, -on -one, I could, but on a video, just talking, being in my truth. No, my voice would not let it come out. It would be like, it just would be like, or I start coughing or I just, my throat wow. would just stop. And I realized um, for me, was that I grew up modeling and dancing. And those are two platforms, which is why the confidence and the and feeling in my power had been working on since I really was a little girl. Those things were there and I just kept expanding that confidence and that power to be seen. But what I did never do was, was activate my voice. Because in those two platforms, you don't speak with your voice. Wow. And so I didn't know for a long time, which is why when I got the message that I was here to empower women, I didn't know how, because I didn't think I had a voice. And so it was the really stepping into the coaching piece. I mean, even the direct sale piece helped me to start identifying my voice. One of the things I realized in that journey 
was that you had to talk and share about that product. And do you know how many women are afraid to open their voice and share about a product that they say they love, that they represent, that they want other people to try, but they don't get it out of their voice? I see it all the time. Now women are in all kinds of companies and they won't speak about what they do. Are you in a networking thing and women start talking about who they, y'all know what they, I don't know, y'all know what they said because they don't, they are too afraid to use their voice to really be in their power, that owning your power and living it to say, this is who I am and this is what I do and not caring what people think, judging or anything. And so that's the biggest piece for me is the voice piece, because now that is really where I'm being called with my voice to really expand this message of women that don't be invisible and be fabulous, really stepping into that. And so I have to always consciously remind myself to show up. And, and I sometimes I, I do well at it and sometimes I still don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a practice. I mean, everything is a practice. And, you know, that is, I'm, thank you for sharing that. I had no idea that that's where that stems from because, you know, I'm your friend. And every time I see you and I've known you for a couple of years, like you are this confident, like when you are on a Zoom call and in the room, like your energy, your vibration shines through. So I would never have thought that that was something that you had worked on or needed to work on in the past was using your voice because you're so amazing and eloquent eloquent at it. Obviously, that's why I asked you to be on the podcast because you're amazing um, and so transformational. So thank you for sharing that because I think it does tell women like, and part of the reason for this podcast is, is saying you are not alone. You right. are not alone. We are, somebody else is going through what you are going through and somebody that you don't even think is going through something, you know, we'll share with you. And you're like, oh, I had no idea. You know, and I think it just gives women hope um, that there's ways to work through things and everyone is going through something. Well, yeah. And, you know, and also for me, I'm of a generation that's not transparent. I really am in a different generation where we're not the transparent people, you know, on social media. And so to step into this space and really share that you know give to to admit that about myself is huge yeah huge for me because i come from the generation where you don't you don't do that i mean i'm that cor i'm in that corporate track where you don't admit any faults yeah any any there cannot be i came from dancing there that is like lawlessness modeling Flawless. I mean, you, there's no room for error or, or, or mistakes or anything in those things. I mean, you show up, you ever look at models, you, you, they just, they run, they walk the runway flawlessly without any mistakes. I mean, of course, sometimes you trip for something, but for the most part, no. And if one does, the, the, the ridicule the 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 backlash of that happening is like oh my god she failed like she can't be human right and so that's for me and having that is where it comes from so I'm always pushing through that more and more over this journey of starting this business and really owning it you know like I said when I started the podcast I mean it really was to be visible on video I have been, my coach had been telling me for years to get on video. Girl, I do one video and I critique that video to hell and back and be like, I don't like nothing about it. I can't stand it. And then I would never put it out there. So I was like two years behind in doing videos because I just couldn't stand it. Yeah. I couldn't stand it. Yeah. And it goes back to that loving yourself, right? Like, no, however you show up and you make a mistake or you flub your words or what, you know, whatever it is, it's like, that's just who I am, whatever. I mean, you know, I can't compare because there is no comparison. We're all unique in who we are. Yeah, I mean, it is. So it's that whole thing. It's that whole thing. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, I like was just looking at the time because I'm like, oh my God, we could be talking forever. Like, I'm like, have we been talking for two hours now? <laughs> I feel like we could literally go on forever. And I, I so appreciate this conversation. Is there anything that you feel, you know, you haven't shared or that you feel like is really on your heart to, 
to give advice or a little nugget for, for moms and women out there that, um, you know, maybe you haven't said. Well, I probably said it, but I'll say it this thing. My biggest message for any woman is just to remember to don't be invisible and be fabulous. Mm, I love that. I mean, it's a simple message, but it's so, it's so hard for women to, to really step into who they are truly meant to be and not be a clone of other people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I love it. All right. Last question for you, my friend. I love okay. to end the podcast this way because we as women do not celebrate our fabulousness enough. Uh, we celebrate everybody else and lift everybody up. But one of the things that we have a hard time doing is celebrating ourselves. So I want to know right now, fabulous Doris Birch, what do you love about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so really what I love about myself is that I absolutely love my confidence. I love really owning how powerful I am. I love that I do let that shine out in the world. I think I am extremely established woman. So I love that about myself. Um, and I just continue to give myself permission to, um, to own it even more powerfully and unapologetically every single day, even if it triggers other people. Mm, yeah. Wow. I love that. That's that we're going to have to come back and like talk about that. Right. We'll have to come back and do another episode on triggers and all. <laughs> that'll be like part two. <laughs> I know triggers are real intriguing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Where can people find you? Cause everyone's going to want to follow you and like your fashion and your mindset and all of your amazing and fabulous ways. Where can women come find you? Well, you can find me on Instagram. I am the fabulous Doris Birch on Instagram. I am the fabulous Doris Birch is where you'll find me on Instagram. Then on Facebook, you will find me at Doris Birch and it's two R's in Doris. So D-O-R-R-I-S Birch, C-U-R-C-H. And then my website is thefabfactor.com, thefabfactor.com. So you can find me in all those places. Awesome. And I will put all that stuff in the show notes because it's so hard to write all that stuff down. So you'll find that in the show notes. So you can easily <laughs> go find um, Doris and like stalk her and talk to her on social media because she's so fun to watch. And when you see her outfits and it's amazing, I'm in all of like your closet and the things that you come out with, it's just like, oh my gosh, yes. Like, I just always say, yes, Doris, yes. <laughs> well, I'm so excited because I'm actually have created a glam room. So I'm going to be taking people through Instagram on the renovation or the recreate or the creating of a glam room. So, oh, have, so fun. Have to join me on that. <laughs> oh, yes, I would absolutely love that. Well, this has been such a gift. Um, thank you for your time and all of your your nuggets and wisdom that you shared. I know that the listeners are just going to love this episode and listen to it over and over. <laughs> well, I hope that something I said will definitely empower another woman to be fully who she's here to be. That's for sure. She's extremely awakened. Awesome. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Bye. Bye.